do a little walk around of the Core XY printer I've been designing. Uh, this is kind of a kind of a simple setup, but uh, it's my first printer I've designed from scratch. So we'll go through a few of the different design features on it and kind of highlight what I did and why. So it's all built out of 2020 extrusion. Uh, I got it from my Sumi, I believe it is. Uh, they did all the cutting. I spec'd it and they cut it and drilled and tapped to fit and a bunch of aluminum brackets from AliExpress and a few other places. And the top of it, this is actually a sheet uh, of aluminum. Um, these are all done with aluminum and there's a few bolts, oh, quite a few bolts around the top of it uh, to kind of keep it rigid. I went with a relatively thin uh, frame, a relatively small frame material because it's all going to get skidded aluminum and that should have plenty of uh, resistance to torsion to make it at least stiff enough for what I'm doing. And it's sticker bombed because, you know, I wanted to be cool like the Drifter kids and I have just an awful lot of automotive stickers from various cars I've built. So that's kind of the, the top of it and the sides. Um, these additional brackets here just add a little bit more uh, rigidity to it. And then they're also where the MGN tw or, yeah, MGN 12s that run on the side sit. Um, so if you look, the Z-axis has three MGN 12s that feed it or that uh, control it. And then there's a uh, lead screw on each side. And that all connects down to this piece of quarter inch aluminum plate at the bottom. Um, that's not anything special, it's just a piece of aluminum cut in a triangle to uh, make it a little bit lighter so it's a little bit easier to move. Uh, but the print bed itself is a piece of Mike 6, uh, which is uh, cast aluminum that's been milled. And sorry, it doesn't really uh, focus very well, there's a piece of glass on top of it. And that's just held on with some little spring clips here. And then there is a 120 volt, I think it's a 900 watt heater underneath it. Uh, and that's what I use for bed heating, it keeps it nice and toasty. Uh, this enclosure will eventually get completed so that it's sealed and uh, have a door on the front and that bed heater will uh, probably be able to keep it warm enough for what I'm doing. Uh, if it doesn't, we'll go ahead and add an external heater inside of it. So uh, we'll go ahead and step around to the back here and kind of show what we've got going on back there and uh, then I'll show you the belt drive on the bottom. Uh, so on the back here, we have a couple of spools. These are sitting on ball bearing spool holders. They just run uh, 608ZZ skateboard bearings. And we have a couple of uh, proper E3D Titan extruders and some Bowden tubing. And you can kind of see all my various cable managements here. Um, there's two boxes. There's one here and one up here. Uh, those are where all of our end stops and motor controls and everything run. Uh, I'll show you from the inside kind of how those work. Uh, but then those feet out of here, I obviously need to print a cover for that. I just have been lazy and haven't done it. And then on the side here, these are little brackets that hold uh, XT60 RC car connectors. Uh, that's where my 40 watt heaters run. I just wanted something a little bit beefier. So that's what those are for. And the box on the back here, this holds my ramps controller. Um, it's just a ramps 1.4, uh, nothing really fancy. I've got a few add-ons on it to allow it to run some LEDs and a few other things, but I'm running some 8825 steppers right now. I've got some Trinamic TMC 2130s coming in that I'm going to hook up with SPI. Uh, beyond that, these uh, fan grills you see here, there's a 120 millimeter Noctua in there. Uh, moves plenty of air and keeps everything nice and cool without being loud and annoying. And over here on the side, this is just an exhaust fan. Um, I've got a golf cart 24 volt to 12 volt stepper converter, uh, voltage stepper in here. Uh, to drop it from 24 volts from the power supply down to 12 to run the various 12 volt accessories. Um, over here, this other vent is for the power supply. It's just a, uh, a mean well 24 volt. I think it's a 300 watt, which is pretty overkill since I have an AC bed heater. Uh, but, you know, better overkill than underkill, I suppose, right? Uh, the rest of this case needs a little bit of cleanup. Uh, this will probably all get painted at some point here soon. Uh, and then you can see some of the belt drive for the Core XY system. So the Core XY setup on this, uh, I don't like the belt crossing just because it looks weird to me. So uh, I have a uh, dual height. And then what I've been working on lately is, uh, we'll call this the print head or the carriage, but uh, it's sitting on a pair of MGN 9s. So there's one here and there's one 90, 90 degrees to it. Uh, that's just to allow this assembly to be as rigid as possible, which it really is quite rigid. Um, and then the belts actually bolt into this little piece here that's removable from the rest of the carriage. Uh, I did that in case I want to, you know, put a laser in here or change uh, the extruder or whatnot, change the hot end, I should say, not the extruder. 
uh, change the hot end. This allows me to take out four bolts and remove all of that off the MGN9 without having to retention the belts because that's kind of a tedious process and I don't have to do it any more than I need to. So uh, that's cut out of 6061 aluminum and we'll see if we can kind of get in here. The entire assembly that holds the uh, hot end in place is all cut out of T6. Uh, 6061. That's uh, I've got a little CNC mill that I bought recently, and this was uh, my first project with it. So I went ahead and drew that all up in Fusion 360 and cut it out. And then we've got some optical end stops that you'll see on these corners here. And then if we look back here, you can see uh, what I was talking about with the cable quick connects that you see from the back. And basically, there's just a couple little uh, strip boards in here that have these miscellaneous connectors on them. And that allows me to be able to remove all of the wiring in here without having to take anything through from the back. Uh, it just makes life a little bit easier. Uh, as this thing gets warm inside, I'm going to have to check. These are just PLA. So if I run into any problems, um, I'll either make them out of ABS or PETG, um, or I'll just mill them out of aluminum, which is probably overkill. But uh, you can also see the LEDs on the top. Those are RGBW LEDs, so they can change color. They indicate the uh, printer status, uh, just done with the basic code in Marlin. Nothing too fancy. So, if we come around to the front here, you can see the hot end assembly. So this is an E3D Chimera. We'll get up underneath and you can kind of see how it's set up. I have a hardened nozzle on one side and a brass on the other, which is probably a bad idea for some reason, but uh, it works what I'm doing. If I'm gonna put anything through the extruder that's gonna tear it up, or through the hot end that's gonna tear it up, I put it through the hardened side. Um, the fans uh, for cooling the parts are 5015s. I need to get a few new ones with ball bearings because these are kind of loud and noisy, but they do the job for now. And uh, just some ducting I built that feeds everything down with a 40 millimeter fan. And you can see the Bowden tubes that come in. So we'll go ahead and uh, flip this thing over and I'll show you what the belt drive on the bottom looks like. So here's a look at the belt drive on the bottom. And uh, yeah, it's a, <laughs> it's a long belt. Um, it was set up the way it is to get a pretty significant amount of wrap on all of them. I wanted to make sure nothing slipped. And then it was also uh, kind of designed to be able to take a few different size belts in case I have a hard time getting one. Uh, this is an endless belt, so it's just a big loop. And then we've just got a little, little motor drive in it, just another stepper. So uh, these all drive to the lead screws. These pulleys here are just bolted on and it is a, uh, uh, what a three to one uh, underdrive. So you get quite a bit of torque out of it and it doesn't have any problem slinging that bed around relatively quickly. I mean, it's a pretty significant amount of space, but um, outside of that, that's really about it. Uh, this is the tensioner for it. It's just got a, uh, a nut set into a piece of uh, ABS and then you can turn this bolt and it'll set the tension on it. Uh, the tape underneath it is because it sits right against it and when it really gets that belt moving, it tends to vibrate a little bit, and that was the most annoying and loud part of it. So, but yeah, that's kind of a quick tour of it. I'll get some video of it running, and uh, if anybody has any questions or actually you know, is interested in the build, I do have uh, all the CAD files for all the parts I designed on it. Um, oh, one last thing. Uh, these were the other part I made. Uh, this Core XY is based on another guy's design on Thingiverse, and I don't remember his name offhand, so I will link that. Uh, down in the uh, doodly do below, but I redesigned it to be able to use actual tooth pulleys on the sides and smooth pulleys where I needed. Uh, he'd originally used uh, just little bearings for all of it, and I didn't want to run the tooth side of the uh, belts on the bearings, so I tweaked it to use a little bit bigger parts, and then I tweaked it again to have aluminum pieces, uh, just because these these had a tendency to get a little bit of flex in them when they got warm, and <laughs> there's no flex in aluminum, so or at least not for the purposes of what I'm doing. And then from underneath. You can see that we also replaced uh, those bottom brackets of aluminum where they bolt to those MGN-12s. Uh, again, that was kind of just all in the name of removing flex. Uh, this was relatively rigid as it was, but when everything get up, got up to temperature and really got moving, it just had enough flex in it that it wasn't, uh, it wasn't dead consistent. Um, as you can see, I've been working on doing some bed leveling. Apparently, I need to work on the center of my bed. It looks to be a, a tiny bit high, but overall, not too bad. System's working pretty good. Dual extrusion works. I've done a few tests, and uh, we'll carry on with getting it done. And, uh, yeah, if anybody has any questions, just ask me down below.